making me th say this. It's a great day to be alive as we celebrate National Wine Day here on Talk Pittsburgh. I'm joined by certified sommelier Adam Knezer. Thank you so much for coming on. Absolutely, it's my pleasure. And happy National Wine Day to you. Indeed, it's a celebration. It really is. So let's talk about how you became a sommelier, because this, this is a big deal. Yeah, yeah, sure. I mostly self-study. I lived in France when I was younger, and I became sort of enamored with the idea of wine. I'm a big nerd at the end of the day, and wine's a great way to study geography, geology, language, cultural traditions, culinary traditions, all wrapped up into something really delicious. You know, I mean, we can celebrate with a glass of wine, but there really is a history to what you're drinking, and, and there's a lot that goes into it. Yeah, yeah, wine above all else is a story of place. Yeah. And that's what we do as sommeliers, is often we will analyze what's in the glass in order to learn a little bit about it, where we think it's from, how we think it's grown, and what grape or grape varieties are in the glasses. It's really interesting. And this isn't a title you could just give yourself, right? No, there are certifying <laughs> bodies that do examinations. So I became a certified sommelier in 2017 in Montreal, and you take three parts. There's a blind tasting exam where they give you four wine glasses just like this, where they don't tell you what they are. You have to tell them what they are a written theory examination, as well as a uh, service portion where we have to serve wine properly to one of the master sommeliers in the world. Was that nerve wracking? Uh, slightly, and yeah. many people were nervous uh, dropping champagne glasses, walking around the room. Uh, thankfully, I was able to avoid such disaster. Okay, this may be tough, but what is your favorite kind of wine? Uh, they're, they're all my children. I yes. can't possibly choose one favorite, but I am a sucker for white and rosés, I will say. I was going to say, we say we don't have favorite, but Okay. All right, so we, you brought some rosé. I did. I brought a rosé from Chateau des Ferrages in oh. Côte de Provence. Sounds much nicer in French, right? So it really does. Traditional rosé varieties such as Sanso, Grenache, and a white wine grape called Rolle, which really rolls off the tongue. Gosh, I love hanging out with you. All right, we're going to try this. <laughs> yeah. Tell me, is there a right way? I know that there's like a, you got to kind of do a little bit of this or so no? So there will be a swirl involved, but actually we don't want to start with a swirl because oh. that artificially amplifies the aromatic intensity of the wine. So we look at it visually to give okay. us clues about what its color and color concentration might tell us. Okay. So we can see we have a very pale sort of pink, almost salmon type of color in the glass, which as a sommelier, that gives you a clue of, okay, what grape variety or varieties might be here and production method. And how does it get its pink coloring? It's a great question. What most people don't realize is that wine gets its color from the skins. White wines don't have any color because we don't use the skins in winemaking. And so rosés have a minimal amount of skin contact and usually are made from very thin skin red grapes, thus imparting a minimal color. You get that little bit of coloring. Yes. Okay, so next we, we've looked at the coloring. Then we smell that. Then but we, we don't smell. swirl yet. Don't we want to kind of get the aromatic intensity, so okay. we place it toward the center of our chest. And if we can breathe in and smell, we would call that intensely aromatic. But I don't get anything just yet, do you? A little bit, but I swirled. Right. Bring it to your chin. Okay. You'll smell it more, and that we have more of a medium aromatic intensity. Yeah. And then now we can give it a swirl. And if you have trouble swirling, my tip, put it down on the table, use your index finger and your thumb, and okay. you make small concentric circles like that. And what you're doing here is you're introducing a little bit of... You're amplifying the aromas. The molecules okay. are now jumping out of the glass, and that helps us sniff and get a better sense of what kinds Ooh. of aromas we're getting. So you can smell fruits and flowers, yeah. things of that nature, which offer us clues into what grape varieties might be in the glass. And do you have any idea based on what we just did? I do, and these are very typical rosé aromas. We've mm -hmm. got red fruits like underripe strawberries, underripe cherries and raspberries. There's a little bit of a grapefruit and citrus kind of nature to oh, this. Well, I'm getting that a little bit, but I would have never guessed underripe of anything, so. Character of fruit is very important to us. A ripe fruit and overripe fruit indicates warmer growing conditions and underripe fruit often means cooler conditions or earlier harvesting. Can I drink now? Oh, well, we can okay. always drink. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> okay, we're gonna take a sip. Oh, like gargle, like mouthwash. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Here's the difference. Okay. You're drinking and I'm tasting. So they're both enjoyable. Right. But they're different activities. So when you did that, you're getting it all over the, your palate. Correct. And so what did you get from it that I would not have? So the reason that we do that is because different areas of the mouth pick up different elements in the wine. Mm -hmm. I want to get it under my tongue to see how much I'm salivating, how much persistence of salivation I get, because that tells me the acidity level. The more salivation, the higher acid, which usually means cooler conditions or earlier harvesting. 
You have taught me so much. That's what now I'm here when to I do. start to gargle with wine, people are going to say, "Oh, she's fancy like that." All right, That's you're good. not going anywhere because we right. are going to put you to the test. I can't certify you in any kind of way, but that's coming up. So don't go anywhere. We're going to keep this party going for the national holiday right after the break. Great.